What's happening, guys? It is September 20th, and today's a little bit more of an interesting day. I'm sitting here, of course, still in the cabin out in Missouri. Got another day or so here, and then uh, heading back home. Then I got a whole ton more places I got to be. It's going to be back to back all over the place. You'll see different backgrounds coming up uh, as we go. But today, in, a, in an hour, less than an hour, uh, 50 minutes, I got to lead a discussion uh, with, a, with a group of uh, real estate entrepreneurs. We're, we're part of an organization, Think Realty and uh, Air, uh, American Association of Private Lenders. We kind of merged together and we have a, um, a group that basically, uh, what they call the GRC, it's, it's a government relations committee where we get together. And I've been to DC before to meet with various different uh, legislators and their offices. And then today, since you know, DC hasn't been easy to get into for the last couple of years. You guys know why. Now it's kind of, you know, in a way walled off. Uh, so it's harder to get in to see people face to face. And a lot of them are just working from home. So we're meeting with staffers of different uh, different centers and members of Congress. Today I have, uh, I'm leading discussion in, in 40, 50 minutes with uh, Senator Al Green's office. And, and what we're going to be talking about is something that is a that affects us all. And we all had seen this coming uh, and, and, hit, and it was a big stress for a lot of investors, the eviction moratorium that was being discussed over the, over the pandemic. And it sounds great in theory when you're a legislator talking about how do I help the American public? How do I do something for those disenfranchised folks? Um, when you're talking about big corporations that own uh, many apartment buildings or, or you've got the, the, the big eye buyers out there buying just big tracks of properties that they're going to rent out and make and make their money off of to their investors. And, you know, they're not improving a lot of these properties, right? They're not doing what the individual investor like yourself is doing. Um, they're taking a completely different approach. And of course, they're not going to have a real benevolent look to that unless they have lobbyists and they're throwing money at it. Well, we don't have the ability to have lobbyists to go out there. We're not going to throw millions of dollars at somebody to get them to vote a certain way. Our job is to bring information to them that they may not understand. We had a very, very successful meetings in the past. So far, there's been 17 different things that we as an organization have gone head to head with them on. And all 17, because we are advocates and giving information that they may not understand from a grassroots level and from a ground level, because they're looking at things from corporate levels. Once they understand these things, it changes it. And all 17 of those have an influence to the better. We've actually had those overturned. So it's been very, very good for us and what we've done so far. And today is no, no different. So I'm going to kind of go off some stats with you that we're going to be hitting them with. As again, we're not representing the big corporations. We're zip representing the mom-pop landlord. And interesting uh, stats, quarter four of 2021, 18%, 18% of all single-family purchases were made by investors that have 10 or less properties. That's you guys. You were 18% of the market. The average real estate investor out there that, that buys single families and finances them with conventional lending has 3.4 props. That's, that's how many you have. You don't have, you know, not everybody has 10, not everybody has six, seven. It's 3.4 is the average. Now in, in uh, January to June of this year, um, there's two different uh, agencies that, that was getting the stats on this. You got Kroll and you've got Moody's and they were saying, Kroll said 65% of all single family residents purchases were small investors. Moody's is saying 70%. So somewhere between 65 and 70% of those purchases. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but they said that's during those from January to June of 2022 were the small investor. Now, I also say 15 million single, there's 15 million single family rentals out there in the market today and 20.1 million are owned by somebody who owns less than five rentals. That's big. Of all the rentals out there, you guys are nearly half of that. That's a big deal for for them to for the legislators to understand this. The IRS says 10.6 million American families receive income from rental properties, and the average income of those people is ninety seven thousand dollars. That's something we want the legislators to understand because they're thinking these landlords are making millions of dollars, and so they can afford to take a mor moratorium on. Not when the average person is making ninety seven thousand dollars a year, and you have the expenses of what we have today. Ninety seven thousand dollars doesn't stretch that far, and since the pandemic, fifteen billion dollars has come in rental property debt, right? People leveraging properties. And eight billion of that is held by mom and pops. So interesting. You know, more than half of the leverage out there since the pandemic has been done by the individual investor. So interesting things I thought you guys might want to know. And so we'll see what comes to today. I think today is going to be a really, really good day. I've got a shirt hanging up there with buttons on it that I got to put on in, in about about a half hour so I can at least look like I'm getting ready to talk to a uh, legislator. So let's look at some charts today and see how things are going. So here you see where, where we're at in the market. 
Our worst we've seen since 2009. It's it's down there. We got a bit of a beating going on. And why is that? Well, there, there's not a lot that's coming out as far as the economic data that is pushing this. I think the market is just really, really kind of freaked out. What's going to come up? We got tomorrow is the uh, is uh, the Fed rate decision. We don't see any reason why we're not. He's not going to raise it. The, 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 they're not going to come back out with a three quarter percent increase. Then we're going to see um, the notes from the Fed because you've got uh, uh, Trump Powell is going to set to have a you know, conversation with the media as soon as that's all done. That always has is a market mover. So we'll see how that goes. I'm thinking just my belief that if it comes out the three quarter percent that we could probably be in a better position, it's going to start pushing things back up because we're so oversold in the market right now. But there's a lot of fear out there. The other thing is you've got an administration claiming one thing about the economy and everybody else claiming something else. So with that kind of confusion, you're going to have some freakouts in the market. We saw a lot of mess going on in the stocks. We got some mess going on, of course, here in the bonds. So for, for right now, I'm just kind of patiently watching to see what happens uh, with the Fed and what they do with the rate decision tomorrow. And then where we end up with um, with uh, their notes and the conversation, the follow-up afterwards. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, appreciate you. Go to the website, scroll down, AaronChapman.com. Just look at the donate button if you're closing deals. 50 bucks every time you close something, man, it's, it's there to help somebody else in a situation that none of us ever want to have to be battling in our life, whether it be family or ourselves. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you again on Friday.